We're obviously talking about a very complex issue that's playing out before us, but I think the real test of each of your positions is going to be in the outcome. And so what I'd ask you to do is look forward to a potential outcome. If your position prevailed, and we aren't talking about getting in, intervening or not, we're talking about degrees of intervention really here, I think, between the two panels. If your degree of intervention, if your position prevailed, what outcome within realism do you think would be most favorable for the United States' interests? That's a terrific question. Um, I'd like to put it first to the side that's arguing the U.S. has no dog in the fight in Syria. If, you, if, if you, what, what, what policy prescription are you actually suggesting, and what's the outcome of that prescription, if you can predict? Graham Allison. Absolutely great question. I would say that our hope would be, and the best hope, but it's a, far, it's a stretch, but the best hope is a situation in which the combination of uh, humanitarian assistance to the victims and close working with the neighbors in the region and a strategic concept of a government that could exist after a transition leads to a negotiation in which there's a extended transition of power. And I would say that's a, that's a stretch, that's a, that's a distant hope, but the alternatives to that, if I look at them, are worse. Other side, uh, Nigel Schoenwald. I, I don't think our recipe is fundamentally different. It's the same. I think our, our view is that that has to be approached more urgently, and we need to put more tools on the table, get more, get, get more involved, short of um, being sucked into boots on the ground and, and real military, military action. That, and the worry I have is that it gets much more difficult to see that, um, that political transition uh, ending in a, in a reasonable representative uh, Syrian government the longer this goes on. Um, and the, the, the problem is that we've waited a long time, the extremists have the upper hand, and what you're saying, I think, is that we just have to accept that al-Qaeda um, and, and Hezbollah should slug it out. We say, no, there remains uh, a, a distinct and credible moderate force within Syria that we have to uh, support um, and, uh, and get to the point where they can make their own decisions. Yes, yes, Graham Allison, yes. Graham Allison. I, I mean, I, I think Nigel is, is uh, speaking uh, directly to the point, but I would ask the, uh, Fareed Zakaria, who's been struggling with this a lot, had a good line recently. I wonder if you disagree. He says, quote, we want an outcome in Syria that's even more ambitious than the one we sought in Iraq, and yet we imagine that we couldn't get it by a, a, a no-fly no zone or even less than that. So do, do you disagree with that? Um, I, I don't disagree fundamentally, but I'm just looking at the other comparable um, examples. And my comparable examples will be not ones that will be very appealing to this audience or to a British audience in terms of what we'd want politically. But I look at Tunisia, I look at um, uh, Egypt, I look at Libya, I see all the reasons why um, it would have been very convenient to keep the, uh, the old regimes in power, but I don't see al-Qaeda in charge in any of those places, and I don't see why, the, why that needs to be the case in Syria either. We're going to hear from Richard and then Nick. Richard Falkenroth. A, a lot hangs on you, your assessment of the character of the Syrian state. Uh, and the, one of